No way. It's our first Massasauga of the day. What's up guys? This is my first morning in Michigan and I'm just doing a quick little outing. I've got a couple hours to kill and uh, wanted to see if I could get to a local spot and find some Massasauga rattlesnakes or Butler's garter snakes, uh, whatever I can find here. And then hopefully we'll be doing a little bit more extensive outings with my buddy Nick in the next couple days. So I'll check back in and let you know what we find. All right, first snake of the morning. It's this really pretty eastern garter snake. Way different than the garters that I was seeing in Pennsylvania. Quite a bit different than the Florida eastern garters too. A lot of variability in the species. All right, I'm going to let them go and keep going. Just got garter snake number two, another eastern. Beautiful striped specimens here. All right, you're free to go. He actually crawled right over my boot. Here's something I don't see on every hike. It's a crayfish. Now what's really interesting is that the Massasauga rattlesnakes actually overwinter down inside crayfish burrows. So these guys are a really important part of the Massasauga's uh, natural history. All right, so I'm just searching this uh, small meadow for Massasaugas and Butler's garter snakes right now. As I mentioned before with the crayfish, Massasaugas spend the winter down in more lowland swamps overwintering in the crayfish burrows. But in the summer, they migrate upland into these drier meadows. And that's where the gravid females hang out basking for the summer. And so that's what I'm checking. Another eastern garter snake and off into the stream. Garter snake number four. I just road cruised a peacock. Right here. No way. It's our first Massasauga of the day. I almost stepped on it. No wonder. Big male. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's really sunny, but... Just blends right in. All right, here's a better look at our first Massasauga of the day. It's a really big male. We think it's probably around two feet long and really like a stocky snake, well-fed. 
um, just probably going into a shed cycle or coming out, but uh, so it's not as pretty as it could be, but it's still a really handsome snake and an awesome uh, first snake of the day. I just walked up on Massasauga number two. Uh, I was just walking along and she buzzed me deep from the grass, but uh, oh, that's amazing. Zoom in a little bit, there she is. Looks like she's in blue. Sweet. Nick just spotted number three. I'm not running over there because I don't want to step on another one. I make sure I watch where I'm stepping. Oh, I hear it. <laughs> Fired up. Nice. <laughs> Twitchy. Okay. One of them seem to be going into the blue. Me too. Oh, there he goes. It's a little bit of a better look at Massasauga number three. Sweet. All right, so this is just getting insane now. The conditions aren't even that great. And Nick just walked up on number four. It's small, but it's gorgeous. <laughs> Tiny little guy. Look at that. Let me get over here and get my shade on it so you can see it a little better. Look at that cute little thing. Here's another look at that little uh, yearling Massasauga. Nick thinks it's most likely one of last year's neonates. And man, what a gorgeous little snake this is. Probably had a fresh set, shed recently, um, got a little bit of food in its belly, but even without that little food bolus, it's just a really healthy snake. There's no shortage of food in this meadow. What an awesome little find. Yeah. Going from crazy to insanity here. Got number five. Oh yeah, I see it. Come around here. It's way easier to see in the shade. Man, they're everywhere. These guys may not appear to have the most cryptically colored camouflage ever, but their habitat is so dense that just that little bit of blotching breaks up their outline and they just blend right in. Like, I've got the camera pointed right at it and it's still hard to see. That is awesome.